You know, life is uh, rather unpredictable. Just when you think you've got everything figured out, that, that all your plans are coming together, the unexpected happens. Doctor gives you a bad report. You don't get into your dream school, even though your grades and your test scores are high. You've been working hard and getting in shape when you develop a nagging injury and you, you lose all your progress seemingly overnight. The sale of your house falls through again and you're stuck with two house payments. Some of you have been there. Your ex decides to play dirty in an attempt to keep you from visitation or custody. Looks like their lies and manipulations will work. You had retirement all planned, but it came crashing down when your company decided to no longer honor your pension. Your adult child develops an addiction to painkillers. I could go on and on. There are so many unexpected challenges in life. What you need is a promise, something to stand on when trouble comes. Well, this year we're learning God's promises. If you miss a week, be sure to pick up the card with that week's promise to add to your promise book. It's at the display in the lobbies. If you haven't got a promise box yet, you can also pick up one of those. And here's the deal. Every morning, pull out a promise. Read the promise for that day. And you say, well, Pastor Rod, we've only studied five so far. That's awesome because you're going to know those promises. Now, here's this week's. This is one of my favorites. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Now, doesn't that sound great, straight paths? In Hebrew, the word used for straight there means more than guidance. It's God removing obstacles and making a smooth path for you to get towards the goal. And the image that kind of popped in my mind is curling. Have you ever seen it? It's like watching paint dry. The sweeper's job is to go ahead of the rock and create a clear path. It's fascinating to watch. Last rock. N6. Up by three is Holman, but there are two yellow counts. This is still on the outside, Red. Gotta come through, gotta get through. Little tick. Oh. Nick and wow, yeah. the Nick the count. Here's the double yep. attempt from yep. 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 Bruce yep. Mullet. Did he get it? Go go. Nicely Five. done. Get out. Just throws those so yep. technically sound. Not. Okay, maybe it's not that fascinating. I'm not even sure that qualifies as a sport. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. But it's a, a great image how the Lord goes before you, smoothing the path, bringing you to the goal. It's more than direction. It's power to continue on the path. And that's an awesome promise. Here's the picture, though. For most of you, your life path is anything but straight. You know, we start here. We'll call that birth. That's one of the only things we all have in common is we're all born. That's kind of how you came to be. Uh, and then our ultimate goal is here, heaven. And what we want is a nice, straight, linear path, right? We start here when we're born. We don't, ex we don't experience the terrible twos because we're wonderful. We have terrific twos. And we just keep moving right on up. And until one day, we don't want to die. But we want God to just take us up to heaven in a whirlwind. And everything was just nice and smooth. And everything just perfect. Instead, your life kind of looks like this. You're doing good. You're on track for a while. And then, then you kind of go here. And then, oh, you kind of go backwards from where you planned. And then you have a time when you're up. And then, oh, my goodness, you never should have dated him. And so that just... <laughs> That just goes around and around and around and around and around. Feels like it's never going to end. Then the, one day you get wise and you break up and we get up here and uh-oh, he called again. And here we go back again, <laughs> right back on that same path. And you're just, you know, you get the dream job you always wanted, except now the doctor gives you a battery report. And then, 
uh, man, that's awesome. You lost 20 pounds. Oops, gained it all back, plus five. And then back to that old boyfriend again, and we're going around and around. And that's what your life looks like, just ups and downs. Isn't that a good picture of, of what you experience? You want that straight linear path, but you completely don't get that. You know the general goal and direction, but you just lose you lose the, your way, and you go off course. And what you end up with looks like a bad piece of abstract art. And you look at that, and you wonder, God, why aren't you making my path straight? Why is the road so crooked and bumpy? Why don't I seem to be making just steady, straight line, linear progress? Some people look at that and decide that God doesn't have a plan for them or God doesn't care. They lose confidence or trust in the middle of the twists and turns. Well, if God really loved me, then there's no way life would look like this. Here's the reason. You look at the promise straight path and you ignore the condition, the rest of the statement. You're excited about the straight path and you overlook the process that leads you to a straight path. So let's back up and look at it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. The dictionary definition of trust is confident expectation of something. Reliance on the integrity, strength, and ability of a person or thing. Confidence, a person or thing on which one relies. How, how many people do you 100% trust without doubt or question? I mean, if they say it, you believe it every time. It's a short list, isn't it? There's an erosion of trust in our society. We trust fewer people less often. And in some ways, that skepticism is valid. It seems every month a company's in the news and busted for false claims. Maybe you remember when Kellogg's said eating Rice Krispies improved kids' immunity. They couldn't prove it. Kellogg's agreed to pay $2.5 million to affected consumers and donate $2.5 million worth of product to charity. New Balance said wearing their shoes would help you burn calories. They left out one tiny part you have to exercise in those shoes. They paid a $2.3 million settlement. Olay Cosmetics retouched a model's face on an ad for a product that said it would reduce wrinkles. So it's not the product that reduces wrinkles, it's Photoshop reduces wrinkles, which we all knew that. When the truth came out, they just explained that post-production techniques were standard operating procedure. Snapchat claimed all the pictures you took on its platform disappeared after a certain time. Later we found out they stored user data. And hackers were able to build a database of 4.6 million usernames and phone numbers. Volkswagen cheated on their emissions tests and lied to consumers. They recalled millions of cars, bought some of them back. It cost them billions of dollars. Some of you remember cigarette ads that claimed smoking was good for everything from weight loss to reducing coughs. I could go on and on. You don't know who to trust, so you don't trust at all. And I worry that the disappearance of trust in people, companies, government, and media carries over to our God concept. If people let you down, do you expect God to let you down? Can you have confident expectation that God will come through? Can you totally rely on him? Can you trust God? When things are going good, when you're healthy, happy, and whole, trust is easy. The true test of trust is when things don't go your way. Trust is built on history. Every time I do what I say, every time I come through for you, you trust me a little more, and over time you decide, I trust Roth. His word's good. He's proven himself to me. I trust him. Trust is built over time with consistency. To keep trusting in hard times, you have to change your focus. Instead of focusing on your present, focus on God's history. 
What has God done for you in the past? What has God done for others? When you focus on God's history, that creates faith and trust for your future. Trust in the Lord. Trust is just five easy letters. Easy to write, easy to say, hard to do. If you've been hurt or betrayed, you know how hard it is to trust again. That you can trust the Lord. Some of you want to see proof in order to trust God, which makes it not trust. Trust is belief plus confidence. Trust is believing God is working even when you can't see it. There's a great old preacher years ago, a guy named S.M. Lockridge. And he wrote and preached these words about trust. He's the one who made us. It is he who made us and not ourselves. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. I'm telling you today, you can trust him. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. He is God's son. He is the sinner's savior. I'm trying to tell you, church, you can trust him. He doesn't have to call for help, and you can't confuse him. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He stands alone in the solitude of himself. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. He's the miracle of the ages. I'm trying to tell you, you can trust him. He can satisfy all your needs. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he sees. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He changes the leper. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers captives. He blesses the young. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. I, can you get this? I'm trying to tell you, you can trust him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway to righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway to glory. You can trust him. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the courageous. He's the head of heroes. He's the leader of legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of the governors. He's the prince of peace, the king of kings, the lord of lords. You can trust him. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. Thank God the grave couldn't hold him. There was no one before him. There will be no one after him. He had no predecessor. He'll have no successor. You can't impeach him, and he's not going to resign. You can trust him. He's an awesome God. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the giver of life. He's the joy in every sorrow. He's the light in every darkness. He's the peace that passes understanding. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. There's no God before him. There will be no God after him. We can walk out of this church today knowing that God is trustworthy. You can trust him. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. Now I want to read that verse again. And I want to put the emphasis in a slightly different place. And I think this might help you see why your paths are crooked and confusing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight when we say all what we mean is most we hold back what we want to keep and we give only what we have to we give some and pretend we're giving all all god can't really mean all because all is too extreme 
But the promise says, trust him with all your heart. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. The message says it this way. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. Trust with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Listen for him in everything you do. Everywhere we go. I think the reason we don't experience straight paths is because we don't make an all commitment. We trust God with some of our heart. We acknowledge God in some of our ways. We don't do all very well. We've rewritten this verse to read this way. I will trust in the Lord as much as I am able, as long as it doesn't cost me too much, make life inconvenient, or keep me from fitting in with everyone around me. I will ask and expect expect him to bless my plans. I acknowledge him as Lord, but really don't let that affect the details of my life. I do what I want, when I want, how I want. I will not allow anyone, including God, to impose what I think are unrealistic expectations on me. Then because I've given some trust and followed him with part of my life, God better make my path straight. And then you are angry and surprised when you encounter the twists and turns of life. What does it mean to trust God with all your heart? What does it mean to acknowledge him in all your ways? In our do what I want, when I want, convenience and consumer-based society, to be all out for God is counterculture. We've got too much else to do. We've got so many other things on our mind. We've made a halfway commitment acceptable. A some of the time partway commitment is the norm. One of the places that shows up is church attendance. The trends are disturbing. People are giving less and less of their time to God and the church. The average church person who considers themselves a regular attender now attends about one out of every three weeks. If you miss two out of every three soccer practice, guess what? You'd be off the team. If you miss two out of every three dance classes, you won't be in the show. You show up because you don't want to miss the reward. But when it comes to church, it's different. And I wonder if attending one service, one out of every three weeks, is an all-in commitment. I wonder if that's a commitment on any level. I'm concerned, not because there's a magic amount of church attendance that makes you good or safe, but because we're less committed than ever before. I'm worried that people who are trying to be lifelong followers of Jesus are not even giving it an hour a week in pursuit of that goal. I'm concerned that as evil in our world increases, we are responding by lowering our commitment level. Doesn't make sense. Since the enemy is fighting the church, let's spend less time, let's lower the bar, let's drop our commitment. Let's fight a more difficult battle by easing up. Maybe if we lower our commitment level, maybe if we give God less, he'll help us more. I'm trying to figure out how that relates to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. We're not the only church struggling with this. It's a creeping crisis in our culture. I read about one church who decided to address it head on. They sent a letter to the entire membership and said, if you're not going to attend regularly, not going to give, find another church. We're going to be committed and serve God with our whole heart. Our church may be smaller, but it will be stronger. Now, I'm not ready to send that letter. I understand we're at different points of the journey, but I am determined we are not going to be a passive group of half-committed, low-energy, part-way convenient Christians. I'm going to call and challenge and push you to a higher level even if that makes you uncomfortable. Why? Because I want to build a faith in you and a faith in this church that's capable of withstanding difficult times. Wishy-washy, half-hearted, low-committed, part-time followers aren't going to survive hard times. Just doing business as usual isn't good enough. Satan's up to his game. We better up ours. 
What does it mean to trust God with all your heart? Well, the next verse answers part of that question. Lean not on your own understanding. The message says it this way. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. You plot, plan, strategize, and scheme to make your path straight. But all your planning just makes the path more crooked and confusing. Trusting God with all your heart begins with a belief that his plan is better than your plan. His plan for your finances is better than your plan. You say, well, I, I just, I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. His plan for relationships is better than your plan. His plan for your business, better than your plan. His plan for your family, it's better than yours. His plan for the future, better than your plan for your future. In every area of life, God's plan beats your plan. His plan makes a straight path. Your plan. Abstract art. If you can't buy into his plan being better, then you'll never be able to trust him with all your heart. We struggle with trust when things don't seem to make sense. But trust is not only believing that God will do it, but it's allowing him to choose how he will do it. Pastor Parker sent me an email I saved because the words are so powerful. I put it in your outline so you'd have it, but I want to read it to you. We lose trust in God because we feel like he hasn't fulfilled his promise or we feel like he hasn't blessed us. The problem is we limit God's blessings, miracles, or promises to what we think they have to be for the situation. We think the only way God can bless us financially is if he completely pays off our debt. We think the only way it's a miracle is if God completely heals us. We choose how God's going to bless us. We choose the miracle that has to take place. Unless the specific thing we decide must happen happens, we feel let down and lose trust in God. If we would only remove our tunnel vision on God's blessing, we might actually realize God's been blessing us all along. No, he didn't pay off all the debt, but he provided an extra job. Someone paid for a meal. Just because God doesn't do what we think his blessing should be doesn't mean he hasn't and isn't blessing us. His will, not our will. His plan, not our plan. Here's what happens. You do things your way. And then when your path is so crooked that you can't possibly find your way to the goal, you say, oh God, I need you. I trust you. Now, that's not really trusting God. That's saying, God, I messed up this so bad. Now I realize my only hope is that you'll help me find a way out of this. And thank God, God responds to Christ's prayers. If you're in the middle of the confusing parts of life and you cry out to God, he doesn't say, hey, you're there because you're stupid. (laughs) Instead, God helps you get back on track, back on path, headed towards the goal, headed towards the future that he has for you. And then as soon as things get better, You veer off his path and go back to trusting yours. And that's why your life looks like on path, off path, backtracking, back on path. The only way out to stay on the straight path is to trust him with all your heart and in all your ways, acknowledging. Listen for his voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. And I wonder what would your life look like What would our church look like if we did that? What could happen or what would happen if you trusted him in your finances? In your relationships? What would happen if you listened for his voice and followed his plan in your conflicts with others? Well, I'll give you a clue. We wouldn't have conflicts with each other. What if you committed all to him as far as being involved in church? Your job, your business, your school, your marriage, your parenting, your schedule. What would life look like? See, we don't have to wonder. The Bible tells us 
your path would be straight, on track, on course, obstacles overcome, moving towards, accomplishing God's objection for your life, able to move past distractions, able to withstand temptations and the selfish agendas of this world, difference maker, world changer, settled, direct. And you're saying, Rod, are you saying if I do that, I won't have any problems? That my life will be worry-free? Now, I can't make that promise. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Trouble's part of the deal. It will come. Instead, here's the picture. The picture is more like spiritual shock absorbers. When you trust in him with all your heart, when you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will give you the strength and power to stay on the straight path and to roll over the bumps and obstacles of life. On your own, they would throw you off track, back on that confusing path, but fully committed to him all the way, he helps you stay on straight paths. That's how our brothers and sisters around the world who face persecution stay strong. Their way may not be easy, but it's straight. They are all in 100% committed, trusting God because he's all they have. My challenge to you is this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. Now, that may mean something different for you than the person sitting next to you. For some of you, it is time to trust God with your finances. You've had all these reasons why trusting him doesn't make sense. So, of course, your finances are a tangled up mess. For some of you, it's, it's your church involvement. We design a year with your spiritual growth in mind. If you only come or listen once every three weeks, you're not going to grow. Now, I know, I hear it. Well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, that's true. I have yet to meet a Christian who's making a difference while well, well choosing isolation from other believers. For some of you, it's trusting God with your business. For others of you, it's your marriage or it's dating habits. For some of you, it's your plans. It's habits. Here's the promise. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. How many of you want straight paths? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll do that. He'll make your path straight. So what is all to you? What is the area of all that you need to commit to him. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray with you. I'm not going to give you a list because there's no way I'd possibly hit everything. Instead, just the question is, for you, what's, what's the area of your life where you're only trusting him with part, not all? Now I want to pray for you for that area. Lord, would you help us? Because we have taken a imperative of Scripture, a direct command, all, and we've turned it into a suggestion. And we pride ourselves when we commit part. And then we wonder why our paths aren't straight. So I pray, pray for people in this room for people watching online who they know that area of their life where they're not fully committed where they haven't yet given God all. And Lord, I pray in the stillness of this moment as they, as they consider your promise they would accept the condition and trust that you will lead and guide and direct them into a straight path. In Jesus' name, amen.